Hello everybody! In this presentation, I'll try to tell you how you can write a book summary. You can carry out writing a summary roughly in four steps. These are reading the book carefully, taking notes while reading, organizing your notes and starting writing the summary, and finally editing the summary. Now let's go over each step one by one and in detail. Reading the book carefully. To be able to do that, you should concentrate fully on the book. You should stay away from the TV and read your book in a place where there is no TV. Turn your phone silent and put it away so it doesn't tempt you. It wouldn't help you at all if you had your phone somewhere near you while reading. Not to get bored of the book, you can try reading it in 20 minute sessions. But if you really like the book, if you, you can read it for an hour or two. The important point here is that you don't forget the central idea of the book and the breaks you take, so don't, don't take long breaks. While reading the book, pay careful attention to main characters and events. Try to figure out who the main characters are and what the main events of the story are. And don't bother yourself with small details because you wouldn't be needing them for your summary. Now let's have a look at the second step. Taking notes while reading will both make your work easier and help you save time. Imagine that you finish reading the book without taking any notes. Then you would have to go back to the book to find out where is what and you would waste a lot of time doing that. That is why you certainly should take your notes while reading. But you are going to take notes of what? Firstly, take notes of the main characters and their descriptions. As you read the book, take notes of the characters whom you think have an important role in the story. If the author has made any descriptions physically or personally about these characters, take notes of these too. Compare the attitudes of the characters in the beginning and, in, and at the end of the story and record the changes if there is any. Remember that not all the characters in a story are important, otherwise you will end up with a long list of characters in your hand. Now to give you an example, let's think about a book which we think most of you have read or at least have seen the movie of it, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Here are some of the major characters in the story, Harry Potter, Ron Weasley, Hermione Granger, Professor Snape and Voldemort. What else can we say about Harry? He is the main character, orphan son of a wizard mom and dad, he is clever, humble and brave. So you should, t you should also describe your characters like this too. Next, take note of the story setting. What is a setting? It is simply where and when the story takes place. Stories may naturally take place in different times and places. This place can be a country, a city, a house and even a room. Time can be a year, a month, a season or an hour. Especially for a summary where there is a required word limit Writing about all the places and times would be so long. For this reason, it would be good for you to talk about the settings of the main events. The Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone setting would be England and mostly Hogwarts Wizardry School. And although there isn't any explicit date stated in the story, from the descriptions we understand that it is late 1990s. It is crucially important that you mention where and when the story takes place, that is, the setting. Also, take, no, take notes of the main events in the story. You can think of these main events as the turning points in the story. The events which can change the flow of the story are considered the main events and so you should record them. Answer the questions what, who, where and when and why and how with these events. Here are some of the main events in our book Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Harry finding out he's a wizard. Harry being chosen into Gryffindor. Next, make and follow a timeline, timeline of events. It's crucially important that you're, you write your summary chrono chronologically. To be able to follow the events in the correct order, you can create a timeline. This would especially help you with stories which have a lot of main events. Let's continue with the notes you need to take. Take a note of the story's conflict. What is a conflict? It is simply the struggle between opposing forces, for example, between good and evil, beautiful and ugly, helpful and selfish. Conflict drives the story and without a conflict the story has no purpose or no message. Moreover, conflict develops characters. 
That's why finding the conflict in a story has an important role in describing the characters and making a summary of the book. So, what is the conflict in our book and who is having this conflict? The conflict is between Harry Potter and Voldemort because Harry tries to prevent Voldemort from reaching the stone. Next, you should write down the theme, the idea or the message of the story. Every story carries an idea or a message to convey to its readers. It's kind of a lesson to the story wants to teach you. The theme is what you think you've learned from the story at the end. It's crucially important to write down the theme or the idea or the message because you will be needing it at the end of your summary. Our book, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, has many themes, but these are the major ones. Love of family and friends, the value of humility, good triumphs over evil. Another thing to, thing to note is the conclusion of the story. This part is where the conflict finds a resolution. You should certainly take note of how, where and when the resolution happened and who is involved. This part will also be the end of your summary, so make sure you take clear notes about the conclusion. In Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, the conclusion is this. Harry, with the help from his friends, keeping Voldemort from reaching the stone. You should, of course, give more details about the conclusion, too. Next, write down the words which you don't recognize and check their meaning. You may use these unknown words in the vocabulary file we will be asking you to complete as part of your task. We will talk about the vocabulary file later in the presentation. Now, I'll go over a few points which may help you while, ta while uh, taking notes. You should have several pieces of paper, paper with you. One for your thoughts and impressions about the story, the book, one for lists of characters and events, and one for books, major themes and ideas. You can of course keep your notes in one place, that's up to you, but I personally believe that my suggestion will allow you to have more organized notes. Think of the story in sections, but what are these sections? Beginning, middle, and end of the book. In the beginning, you will see the introduction of ma major characters in the setting and in the middle intro the introduction of the major problem of the book the major problem means the conflict actually and the resolution of the major problem that is the resolution of the conflict if you follow this pattern you may end up with more organized notes also you make you make you may use this organize organization in your summary as well now let's go over the step of organizing your notes and starting writing or summary. You can use information maps to arrange your notes. They will keep your notes more organized and also you will also make them short but to the point. You can prepare them yourself as well as you can find them on the internet. As you can see five W's what, who, when, how, how who, where and why. And there's another list here who, what, when, where, and why, you can add how here too. And keep your notes organized using these information maps. Now it is time to <clears throat> write the summary. So what kind of organization do you need? Here is a structure of a summary. Introducing the book and its topic. Explaining the plot. Plot is the events happening in the story. And ending the summary. Let's go over each of them one by one. Firstly, start your summary by introducing the book and its topic. In this part, include book's name, book's author, book's genre, and a very brief description of what the book is about. It's always difficult to make the start of a writing piece. That's why I want to show you a sample introduction of the Harry Potter and Sorcerer's Stone summary. <coughs> J.K. Rowling's fantasy novel Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone is, a, is about a young orphaned boy who, boy who found, finds out he is a wizard. He discovers there is another world of good and bad wizards and also a school of wizardry. He faces great dangers against a dark wizard from the past. As you can see, the yellow part gives the author's name, green part the genre, blue part the name of the book and the rest red part gives us the description of what the book is about. 
We expect you to write a brief and to the point introduction in your summary without talking about unnecessary details. After the introduction, continue your summary by explaining the plot. In this part, include setting, I think you remember what it is, when and when the story takes place, and characters, remember to mention only the main characters, main events, now you start telling us the story, Remember to write about the events which drive the story forward here, and the conflict. And finally, you mention the conflict in the story here in the middle part of your summary. In this part of your summary, make use of the answers of five W's and one H and give some more details about the main events compared to the introduction part. But keep in mind, there is a word limit. And now you're ready to end your summary. In this part, include the resolution. This is how the conflict is solved. So you should certainly write about the resolution of the conflict and how the main characters are affected by this resolution. And you should also include the theme, the idea, or the message. State what is the message of the book that it wants to convey to its readers and end your summary. You've written your summary, and now one last step is left, editing your summary. To do that, you should reread your summary and answer this question. If you read this summary to a friend who hasn't read the book, would they understand what's going on in the, on the book or what the story is about and would they like to read it? The answer will help you edit your summary. Also, double check all the information about the book. Make sure that you have correctly spelled the author's and book's name and make sure you got the genre right. Check for mistakes. Look for spelling, grammar, or punctuation mistakes in your work. And finally, ask someone to read your summary. This will help you find out the mistakes you might have missed or give you an insight about the content of your summary. And so, you've finally, you've finally completed all the steps. And I want to tell you now some do's and don'ts about your summary. Write the summary in chronological order. Make sure you don't lose a track of the events. Hit the most important points. Don't wear yourself out with details. Don't repeat yourself. Avoid repetitions of descriptions. Keep the summary short. Remember the word limit. If you are below the limit, that may be a sign that you haven't read the story. And if you are way above the limit, you, it may mean that you have gone into unnecessary details. Use your own words. Try to be original in your work. Make sure you have personality adjectives you don't generally usually use. Don't just use good, nice, or beautiful. You can visit the given website for a list of personality adjectives. Make sure you cover the points of who, what, when, where, why, and how in your summary. And don't include your opinion or how you feel about the topic in the summary. You can make use of all this information I've told you in your book report task. So what do we expect from you with this book report? We want you to choose an appropriate book to your level. You should pick a book from bookworms between levels to 2 to 5. After that, we want you to write a brief summary of the book, to write about who your favorite character is and giving your reasons, to write to write what is the most striking and important event in the book and you should give your reasons. Would you recommend this book to a friend? Why? Again, give your reasons. And fill in the given vocabulary file table with 10 words from the book you read. Remember, there is a different word limit for each level. You should check the word limit for your level and complete the first four tasks according accordingly. Once you're Book report is done. You will upload your work to Commons OES before 23:30 on April the 28th. Attention, it has to be your own original work. Turnitin will show us if your work is a copy of another student's by scanning all the other summaries uploaded in the system. If any matching occurs, your work will be treated as copy. It would be beneficial if you use some key phrases and transition words while completing the tasks mentioned. These phrases will not only make your work flow smoothly, but also make them look professional. Here are some of the phrases you can use in your summary. 
in the introduction part you can use the story is about, the story takes place, the story presents, and in the explanation of the plot you can make use of the phrases like in the first part of the story, at the beginning, in the second part of the story, as the story goes on, and then afterwards, and uh, while ending or summary you can use finally, to conclude, in conclusion. You can have a longer list of phrases in the link given below. While writing about your favorite character, the most striking event, or whether you would suggest the book to a friend, you need to express your reasons. So here are some of the phrases you can use. Because of, owing to, that's the reason why, one reason I would recommend the book is that, or the best worst thing about the story is that. So, you can find longer list of phrases you can make use of in your English Speak Out Intermediate book, Unit 2.3 Function Part, Unit 8.2 Writing Part, and in your packs as well. What about the tense while writing or summary? You can use both present simple tense or past simple tense to write up a book report. So take all your notes either in present simple or past simple, like Harry finds out he's a wizard, Harry is chosen into Gryffindor, or Harry found out he was a wizard, or Harry was chosen into Gryffindor. Now let's have a look at the vocabulary file I told you about previously. You are required to fill it with 10 words from the book, giving its meaning, its part of speech, other forms of the word. You need to write the sentence in the book where your words have appeared. And finally, you'll write your own original sentence with the word in it. Now, let's have a look at how we will evaluate your book reports. We will evaluate your summary, your character analysis, striking event analysis, your recommendation and your vocabulary file, and your language quality separately in terms of their standard. Vocabulary file and language quality carry a bigger weight compared to others. As you can see, say you get 3 for your recommendation, your score is 3. While you get 3 for your vocab file, your score is 6. So pay special attention to your vocabulary file and language quality. And you will be graded, evaluated accor according to below standard, approaching standard, standard, above standard, and outstanding. Okay, everybody, now you know how to write a book summary, what we expect from you, and how we will evaluate your book reports. Remember, you can always ask for more information from your teachers and get their help during the process. I wish you all success, success with your work.